zone. He's got Simpkins caught in for the touchdown. Deshaun Simpkins with the snag. Looking left to Sims Marshall. Home run down for Jalen Marshall. He's got a touchdown. It's breakfast in Lakota. Good morning to you. I'm Jeff Kim. Kyle Decker to join me in just a moment. A week ago, the top seeded Firebirds ran its winning streak to seven, defeating the eighth seed Lakota East 31 to 14. Mitch Bolden threw for a pair of touchdowns and added another one on the ground. Meanwhile, the fifth seed, Colerain, got 121 yards and three touchdowns from MJ Flowers. It ran away from the four seed, Mason, 28 to seven. The Cardinals have now won five in a row. So as we bring in Kyle, the Cardinals are peaking at the right time since their last loss to Princeton six weeks ago. Colerain is unbeaten. They've outscored their opponents by 101 points in their five game winning streak. They're gonna be anchored by a guy named the Godfather, a.k.a. Dante Corleone, big defensive tackle committed to the University of Cincinnati and Coach Fickle and company. He is a difference maker. And this week, as Coach uh, Cutright confirmed with us, he'll play more both sides of the ball. They're playing to win tonight. Also, as you said, MJ Flowers, 100, or 139 attempts, excuse me, for 829 yards and 14 touchdowns. That guy is a difference maker. He certainly is. Meanwhile, we know how good the Firebirds defense has been all year. The offense, well, maybe not so much, but they have rounded into form in the last few weeks thanks to their dual threat sophomore quarterback. Yeah, they call him Money Mitch, uh, rightfully so. He was on target last week. Big strikes, nice dart balls to AD, AD. Adrian Davis and also Trent Lloyd for big two touchdowns to get them rolling against their rival Lakota East. On the year, Money Mitch is 12 touchdowns, three interceptions, a great ratio, 376 yards and four touchdowns on the ground as well. And look what he's done just in the last two weeks. 14 of 17, that is 82 and a half percent. It's winning football, anything above 60% is winning football from a quarterback perspective. And as the season has progressed, as Coach Bolden told us yesterday, Mitch has done a nice job of maturing and coming through and making a big difference later in this season. And we'll hopefully see it here tonight. Uh, or Coach Bolden hopes to see it tonight here for his Firebirds. And here come the Firebirds. And good for Jackson Kuwachi He does have his jersey now tucked down on there. <laughs> We did mention just a minute ago that, you know, the last time these two teams had seen each other was uh, at the end of the 2018 regular season. That's obviously not true. We did see these two teams come together in week one of this season in a game in which West beat these coal rank Cardinals for the first time ever in the school's program, 10 to nothing. And here come the Cardinals. Wow, looks like there's, there's some, there's some jawing and Already things going on between both teams. <laughs> you don't think this is a big game and we've got a flag on the field already. Mercy. Uh, the officials are having to separate the two teams. We did see some yellow laundry out on the field. By the way, it's worth mentioning, today's officials, the referee is Michael Curry. The umpire is Doug Ayers. The linesman is Jeff Weiner. The line judge is Mike Goldman, and the back judge is Jeff Logston. The head coach for Cole Rain at six and two coming into this one is Sean Cutright. In his second year, 17 and four his record. Tom Bolden is also in his second year with his program, his current program at 14 and four. In his 14th year overall, 156 and 25. The emotions, let's just sit on that. I've never seen that almost in high school football. That was Lakota West takes the field and stands on their logo, watches Cole Rain come out. Cole Rain comes right up to him. And uh, I don't believe any fists were thrown, but it was hot. Coaches were, looked like they might have been getting into it a little bit. It, they are, uh, th that extra sleep, I guess, got them a little extra motivated. <laughs> we know, as I mentioned, Gumbo, uh, Cameron Good was, was uh, you know, stoking the fire this week on social media. And uh, these guys are ready to go. I know Quasi Jones is, is a you know with with him and, and Mitch Bolden coming from Cole Rain. I mean, there is a lot, a lot of emotions in this game. And right now, it's it, it's going to be a big thing how to channel that emotions and not get too many penalties. One bit of good news that we see out on the sideline, we see Jair Hollywood Brown jumping up and down. That's a good sign because we think that means 
He's going to be in this game. He was absent from last week's Lakota East game. Hooray for Hollywood, as you call him, Jeff. And, and, and that's, you know, I, I think he is a difference maker, obviously, going to uh, Buckeyes, who we'll touch upon here in a little bit, uh, it being Saturday in Buckeye land. And um, we talked a little bit about his, his confirmation and his commitment to the Buckeyes between Dry Air and Coach Bolden. Uh, which is a secure commitment, as we found out. We have a good relationship with the young man, and he is ready to go today as well. And we're finally here, and we'll know in 48 short minutes how this one will turn out between Colerain and Lakota West. One versus five here in this Region 5 tournament. Beg your pardon, Region 4 tournament. Jaden Pacini. Will kick things away from his own 40 yard line. West will return the ball from your left to your right. And away we go. It's a little squibber onto the short side at the 32. Return man up to the 40 yard line and away we go. It was just a little squibber. They tried to catch him off guard and uh, that didn't work. And they got great field position to start things off. Yeah, it looks like Silas Walters, number 10 there with a nice grab on that short pooch kick. And it's a great reason to have a starting safety that has pretty good hands in that range of the kickoff return team. Because right there, you could tell he was able to not only catch it on that, on that scoop catch, but also be able to get uh, about five yards. Great job by Silas. Mitch Bolden is the quarterback, six foot two, 180 pounds, a sophomore, 48 of 96 this year, passing for 50 yards, 652 yards, 12 touchdowns, three interceptions, a rating of 142.1. Trips to the near side, and the give, no, the keep to the quarterback, and he gains nearly five on the play. So starting at uh, tailback is Brian White. He, the, the receivers are Caleb Rao and Adrian Davis. We did see Trent Lloyd out there. When they go big, it's Champ Gillespie at the H-back and Eric Safuentes as a tight end. The offensive line is Tegra Shibola, Ed Bolden, Connor Hudson is the center. Cole Varela is the right guard and Lahan McCormis is the right tackle. And another run play for just a couple. And it'll bring up third and short just that quick. The defense... On the other side, and you saw it, partner, I didn't. Yeah, it looks like some extra crookers uh, on behalf of, of Cole Rain, and it's gonna be 15 yards. First wow. Down. So the defense here for the Cardinals, it's a three-man front. Temeskin, Casse, Dante Corleone, and Josh Ringer, the three-man front. Lavert Jarman, Michael Best Jr., Xander Kendall, and Ronald Williams Jr are the linebackers. The defensive backs are Sean Williamson, Brian, beg your pardon, Brandon Sinclair, Devontae Kiner, and Kenny Willis. Smart, Keep it up. So Play just smart. like that, Lakota West in Cardinal territory. Just 50 seconds gone on by. Bolton calls for the ball, deep drop with time. Now he steps up. He rolls to the left and is tripped up in the backfield for a loss. And I believe that's Bess who got him. Yeah, great, great play by Bess there. Scraping off, another again, pass play, steps up in the pocket, nothing there, and best with flowing through from the linebacker spot coming off uh, the right end there. So a loss on the play, a loss of four from Michael Best Jr. That's his 31st tackle of this year. Second and 14, they'll place the ball at the 42-yard line on the far hash mark. Just getting underway here in Westchester Township. And Cameron Good off right tackle, momentarily had space. Beg your pardon, it's 22, it's Brian White for two. Something to take note off of that first down, that was a, a first first down pass play. Coach Bolden and company are trying to keep Colerain honest. And I think they thought that they might load the box, obviously, and stop the potent running attack recently of Lakota West. So they initially brought Brogdon into the game. Instead, they'll return White and they'll Flank him out to the left in the slot. Twins to each side. Cole Rain showing blitz on third down. Bolton calls for it. He wants to throw. Over the middle, and it's nearly picked off at the 30-yard line. Intended for Lloyd. And a wide open middle for Brandon Sinclair. He might have had six on the pick. And do we have another flag? Yeah, lots of wolf, and I think it's another personal foul, and they're taking number three out of the game. Uh, for Cole Rain, which would be Sean Williamson, the senior cornerback. 
Looks like he might have an unsportsmanlike conduct, which would be another first down for Lakota West. Cole Rain early on not handling emotions very well. Well, it's funny, right? Because Cole Rain had been the top dog literally for 20 years within the conference. And in comes West, breaks their long winning streak in the GMC. And it's West that has the number one seat in Region 4. Yeah, lots of emotions. Like I said, I, I kept a pretty good pulse on social media and talked to both coaches as well. They know it was heated, um, and, and they're going to have to. You get down to football, right? Just start playing football, hard-nosed football. Let the action speak louder than words. There's no reason to be, be jawning after every single play, and I think right now it's an emotional game, and, and these guys got to get their emotions under control. Well, and I think we're seeing that one of the officials came out to Tom Bolden, and, and I think – I think politely so, but I think he's telling his team, to the coach, to make sure to keep their emotions under check. Yeah. So and it is against, by the way, Cole Rain, and they have prolonged a drive. And if this turns into a score for West, wow. I mean, at that point, it's a big problem for Cole Rain. In, in the first penalty, I'm pretty sure, was on Deshaun Stewart, defensive tackle, who's two seniors, right? Sean Williamson who's uh, one of the leaders in Deshaun Stewart. Two seniors coming out making two personal foul penalties to prolong this drive. You know, they can't afford that. And it does look like they're now they're bringing both teams together, try to get this thing under control and, and really work on, uh, hey guys, let's, 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 let's settle this thing with clean, good football. Well, it's been a while since we've seen anything quite like this. I know that you mentioned that you've not seen histrionics between these two teams at midfield before the game even starts and to see flags out on the field. The last time I saw anything like that, it, it, it had to be a Michigan-Ohio State game up the big house. Yeah, we're two minutes and 14 seconds into the game, and we've already had three personal fouls. Think about that, right? Before the game even starts, there's a personal foul, and then there's two personal fouls on the first drive against Colerain's defense. Um, you know, it, it, Coach Cutright, Coach Bolden, who we've gotten to know both well, really good coaches, they, they're going to get these guys under control. And once again, this is a regional semifinal game. They need to play – hard-nosed football let's let's get this thing rolling and and playing there's too many good players too many good teams and hopefully this time out we're both in great job by the the referees to kind of get this under control brian white still stays in the backfield to the right of the quarterback mitch bolden on first down first and 10 at the 24 he calls for it and he'll keep to and not get away stopped right up the middle from the, the Godfather, Godfather. <laughs> Dante Corleone for a loss. The Godfather, Dante Corleone. He's been in on two plays already. He is ready to roll, obviously, as well. And uh, the big fella, we talked about the apex of the defense. How big is that nose tackle? Not only is he a big guy, but it's a huge role to disrupt that offense. And that makes it extremely difficult when you get that type of penetration up front. Dante is six foot two, 340 pounds. Who does he remind you of? Oh, man, there, there's a lot of good D tackles out there. Um, Big Daddy Wilkerson, talking about the Buckeyes back in the day. Twins to the near side. Bolton calls for it on second down. Deep drop, throws to the right, and it's complete. Out to Trent Lloyd, still on his feet. Keeps his feet down the sideline, out towards the 25-yard line. So really initially no gain, and I think he might have gotten five on that play. Great ball skills. Not only does it come out, catches on the outside of his shoulder. He's able to maintain balance and then be able to use his body to leverage on the sideline and tiptoe all, all, the, all the way back down for additional five yards. So the first catch of the day for Trent Lloyd, who's, by the way, not listed as a starter, as a wide receiver, but he's the team's leading receiver this year. Third down, they're going to need to get to the 15-yard line. Empty backfield for Bolden. Twins to each side, looking right, throwing right, complete to the right, near the first down. As Caleb Rao on the comeback route gained eight on the play. He's really close to the first down marker. He looks like he might be a little short. Yeah, it looks like about fourth and one, and they might run a little bit up tempo here. Heavy package, Kuwatch coming in, something we haven't seen, and Henderson as well. Looks like a heavy package. It is a heavy form. package. And we see Aiden Miller for the first time that we've seen him in the offensive backfield. It's a full house. Tight formation, let's see if it's a freeze play. No, it's the give, it's the Miller, he's got the first down! Out to the 10 yard line, first and goal coming up. 
Wow. Talk about playing some football. Coach Bolden dialing it up. Heavy package runs in, as you said, Aiden Miller. We've been covering this team for the in, in Jackson Kuwats. We haven't seen it in the last five games. And uh, bring out the heavy package, and what do they do? They run it off away. Actually, the, the, the strength to the side. They had extra tight ends on the right side. They run it off tackle to the left behind Big Tegra Shabola. So they're going to place the ball at the 11. So it's first and 10 at the 11-yard line with 8.08 left to go here in this first. And it's Cameron Good for his first carry of the day. He's got one yard off the right side. Try a sweep outside and then came back into the middle of the field for a gain of one. Yeah, really interesting how they're uh, rotating in. Uh, looks like Cameron Good is coming out limping uh, here to the sideline. But uh, that was his first carry. As you mentioned, he had 141 yards rushing last Go week. West! To Go have him line! have his first carry uh, is a little bit surprising until they get to the 10-yard line. It's Brian White to the right of the cornerback, Mitch Bolden. This is play number 11 of this opening drive. And the give, it goes to White off left tackle, and he gains a couple of yards to bring up a, a very crucial third down here. Now, partner, I understand that, you know, hey, you've got a situation here where you want to make sure that you get at least three on this possession, but I, I think the way this game has gone so far, and you had the two unsportsmanlike conduct penalties to not get six here would almost be a disappointment yeah yeah i look to see i would completely agree i look for third and seven third and medium looks like they go trips left uh two double out to the right i would see maybe those those quick slants or a quick seam here like we saw effective last week uh looks like one high man underneath for lakota west we'll see what they do here but look for something underneath here holding in the gun by himself empty backfield deep drop and they stop the play timeout and it's charged to Lakota West with 6.40 left to go here in this opening period. No scores. We just get underway the opening drive of this ball game. Along with Kyle Decker, I'm Jeff Kim. It's breakfast in Beckett Ridge or breakfast at Lakota or whatever you want to say here on Chatterbox Live for our Region 4 semifinal this morning. Yeah, if, if I wasn't aw <laughs> awake, if I wasn't awake by uh, kickoff 10 a.m. seeing all the fireworks, man, I... It, uh, it's a lively morning here in Firebird Stadium out here in Lakota West Territory. Um, but it's fun to watch now we're down the football, right? And, and now both teams are starting to play, get focused in on the game. And uh, this is a huge, as, as you just mentioned, this is a huge third and seven. And before that, the, the, they called a timeout in their play. You saw Lloyd actually run a quick seam, right? So we kind of talked about that and the dual routes on the backside. Look for maybe a rub route that you see often, which is a slant arrow. Um, look for something short and medium here across the middle. I think that's Bolden's comfortability. They go trips to the short side, out on the far side. The lone receiver to the near side is Caleb Rao. Third and seven. Bolden calls for the ball. High snap! He has to jump on it back at the 17-yard line. It was a high snap. Got over his head, a loss of seven on the play, and they're going to have to settle for an attempt at three. Yeah, they're going to have to roll out Matthew Howard, but uh, center Connor Hudson, who's had really good snaps throughout the, the year, the senior, uh, just threw it high there. Money Mitch couldn't get his hands on it, and great job just to fall on it. And it's going to set up about a 35-yard field goal for Matthew Howard, which is very well within his range, as we know. Cy Walters puts a knee down at the 25. The long snapper is Ed Bolden. Good snap, the kick is low and it's no good. And Cole Rain has dodged a first period bullet. Big defensive stop by the cards. Matthew Howard there, folks obviously can't see on our broadcast, but he slipped. Uh, he ended up uh, on the ground on the turf. So a little bit of dew here this morning and and uh, he, he maybe overstepped quite a bit, and, and he uh, slipped and fell on the ground there. So That drive went 13 plays, and it came up with nothing. And I have to tell you, given the way this game had started out, that's got to be very disappointing for Tom Bolden. Yeah, you get down on the 10-yard line. A third down play doesn't go your way, then a missed field goal, two negative plays. Uh, not ideal for the Firebirds. And look who's in at quarterback. It's Tyler Prather at 6'4", 210 pounds, a senior. We'll tell you a little bit more about him in a minute. 
And they go to the reverse, and here's Johnson down the field for Myers. He's got it on the 45-yard line. A diving play, one-on-one, -on -one, got by a fire, and a big pickup there of 35. Wow. Razzle-dazzle on play number one. Yeah, the we were wondering. We didn't think after Coach cut right, we were going to see Prather. You see him in there. Then all of a sudden, an end around with, with Freddie comes out to strength of his arm with the left and throws a, a beautiful ball to Myers and goes up and gets it one-on-one -on -one with Afari. Twins to the far side, first and 10. They'll spot it at the 41-yard line. And the gift to MJ Flowers, he's got a big push up the middle for four yards. We'll tell you a little bit more about the team. Prather at quarterback to start things off. MJ Flowers at the running back spot. Shannon Murray and Amari Shannon are the wing backs. Isaiah Myers is the wide receiver. Sean Williamson is a split end. The offensive line of Ben Marshall, Michael Peoples, Zaire Anderson, Dante Corleone, and Josh Ringer will give you the defense here on second and seven. And here's the give again to Flowers off the right side behind Corleone, and they stop him for minimal yardage. The defense is a three-man front for Lakota West. Brian Henderson, Andre Prophet, and Anish Fias. The linebackers, Quasi Jones, Aiden Miller, Jackson Kuwach, and Cameron Vargas. Alex Afari and Hollywood Brown are the corners. The safeties are Silas Walters and Will Barber. So a frenetic pace to start off this Coleraine drive, and it's third and five, and a big play right here for Coleraine. Yeah, potentially no man's land. They might look for two runs here and go on fourth down if your coach cut right. Uh, it'll be interesting to see what they dial up here for the Cardinals. 4.17 left to go here in this opening period. No score. Corain dodged a bullet to start off on defense, giving up two unsportsmanlike penalties and was able to hold West to a field goal attempt that went a little short off the leg of Matthew Howard. Yeah, it looks like the... Uh, the referees are trying to figure out if it was a legal substitution or not. It's taking quite a while. There's a penalty flag on the field on the far side. It looks like they're trying to figure it out here and they're gonna wave it off. Well, a lot of activity so far in the opening minutes for the officials. And I don't know if you pay them overtime. Obviously, everybody had to come out for last night. Didn't get a play. We're here this morning. And even before the opening kickoff, we had some action. Third and five, a big play coming up from the 36, right in between the hash marks. It's a tight formation. And they place Johnson under center to give to Flowers off right tackle and nowhere to go. Brian Henderson, the first to meet him there. Looks like they're trying to figure out if there was a fumble on the play or once again, some extracurriculars going on. But on the play, they had a, uh, it was a dive, a dive right. And uh, they stuffed it. They, the three, four defense, as you mentioned, Jeff, they brought up the guys to bring Kuwach, uh, outside backers, bring up Aiden Mill. They packed the box. It looks like they're gonna punt it here. Brandon Sinclair is the punter. From the 35, and the lone return man is Jair Brown. He'll watch it to his left, and this one down inside the five to the one. Special teams have made a difference here in this postseason, and we just saw a prime example of that just now. 34 yards on the kick, nothing on the return. Incredible punt by the youngster, just being able to dribble it down in. Uh, the short side of the field, you know, he, it's a, that's a, that can be a very tough punt for a punter when you don't have a lot of real estate to work with. He did a great job of just letting it roll down in there and looks like he's going to set up the Coleraine defense with uh, a great opportunity potentially for a safety here as well. Well, are they going to say the contact initially came at the five? So that's the case. So it's at the five instead of the one with 257 left to play here in this first quarter. So a little breathing room for Mitch Bolden. As they go left to right on your radio dial. He calls for the ball in the end zone, and he'll give it off to the running back, and nowhere to go, and I believe a loss on the play. A loss of two to the running back. 
Yeah, and you can see that on first down, they run as well, the 3-4, and you saw both outside backers with the five front coming up. You saw Levert German, Levert German and uh, Ronald Williams, outside linebackers, come up and uh, looks like they're once again, they're going to say, hey, let's let Mitch in the offense have to throw the ball, load the box up. Second, and we'll call it 12. Mitch calls for it. He throws, crossing route in and out of the hands of Caleb Rao. He would have had the first down out towards a 15-yard line. Great job as identified. There's eight in the box. It's one-on-one -on, -one on the outside. A slant route right across. Great ball by Mitch. Rao just couldn't come down with it, but that's, that's what it looks like. Coach Cutright in the cards defense is going to go either cover zero, cover one, and uh, load up the box. And be interesting to see here on third and medium what they go at. And it looks like still continued maybe a cover zero, cover one. Kenny Willis was in coverage on that last play. Third and a big 12 out of the three yard line with 2.19 left to play here in this opening quarter. Bolden calls for it. Looks like it's a run play. And Bowen comes up front. He's got a first down. Up towards the 18-yard line. Pick up a 15. That might be a play to chalk down to remember. Money Mitch with a read option on the left-hand side comes right underneath the guard, Ed Bolden. Another Bolden right there. And uh, he, he was able to follow that nice block by Ed. Num big number 72 right up inside for 15 yards and a huge third down conversion for the Firebirds. First and 10, they'll officially spot the ball at the 19, so a pickup of 16 for Bolden. Twins to the near side. Jackson and Davis in the slot to the right. And the give off left tackle to the running back uh, for a couple of yards. So Brogdon gets a couple on the play. Let's bring up second down. So we mount the clock under a minute and a half here in this first quarter. No score. Glad to have you along here on Chatterbox Live, the Region 4 semifinal between Coleraine and Lakota West. Second, and we'll call it seven, and motion. Motion off the left side on the defensive side. Lavert Jarman was offsides and moved the ball five yards further down the field for Lakota West. And this puts them in a nice uh, schedule situation where they can run or pass. Yeah, second and short is a, is a great place to be for an offensive uh, coordinator to dial it up to be able to, uh, you know, get a short, easy run for a first down if you just want to keep moving the chains or potentially take a, a nine route or a deep ball over top to see what, what uh, they can do early on here. Twins to the near side. Bolden calls for it on second down. He'll keep. He should have the first down out to the 30-yard line. And I think that's going to be your recipe for success this morning. Bolden on the run pass option. Yeah, a little bit of coffee with some creamer, right? <laughs> so he, uh, he, you know, Bolden has been so effective in the last couple weeks we've been able to cover him with his read option. I've been really impressed, not only through the passing game, uh, but through his legs. That dual threat quarterback has been a big, big difference for the Firebirds. We're under 30 seconds to play here in this first period. Bolden gives to the running back, and he is stacked up right at the line. No gain. The godfather again, big 58, Dante Corleone. That's a couple tackles here in the first quarter. And that will be the end of things here in the first quarter. No score here in Westchester Township between Coleraine and Lakota West. It's the Region 4 semifinals here on Chatterbox Live. We're 12 minutes through here in this one. No score here in Westchester Township. I'm with Kyle Decker. I'm Jeff Kim. Glad to have you along for this Region 4 semifinal here on Chatterbox Live. So we switch sides of the field. And it's been a good drive so far, partner, for Mitch Bolden to get them out of the shadow of their own end zone on third down and to their current spot right here at second and 11 out there at their own 29-yard line. 
Yeah, that was a huge go back to that third down conversion. Uh, third and long and be able to run the ball on that read option with Mitch to go out and get that close to 15 yards was a big, big conversion. See if they can continue the momentum here. Trips to the far side, a single. It's Caleb Rao to the near side on the short side. Bolton calls for it. Now looks right, holds on to it. Now throws in space to White. Out at the 30, cuts back to the 35. In! He's got the first down and a flag at the end of the play. Out across the 40 yard line to the 42. If it holds, it's a pickup of 13. Yeah, it looks like, uh, looks like helmet to helmet potentially on the Coleraine defense. Not really sure. Actually, it's going to go against, uh, go against, uh, I think maybe a hold against the Firebirds coming back. The referee is Michael Curry. So really interesting there, they were they had trips right, and it looked like they were trying to throw a bubble route, but it was almost a fake bubble swing route to the short side of the field, and uh, he had some real estate there. That's why he was able to gain, unfortunately, with that penalty, but interesting, really good play. I really like that, that, that uh, the misdirection there, so. So we've got some indecision, even though they've lined the ball up at the 29-yard line, so. We still see second and 11 out on the scoreboard. Do we literally have a do-over? It looks like it. <laughs> <laughs> so second 11 again. The throw to Rao. He's got it at the 40. He's got a first down out to the 45. Cut back to the 50. Out across midfield to the 48-yard line. A pickup of 23 for Caleb Rao. Great. Real, li Little simple hitch route on the backside, one on one. Rao versus Freddie Johnson. Freddie Johnson going both ways. Uh, might be, you know, he was in almost like a cover three look where you're about six, seven yards off. They're giving that underneath route. Great, uh, great hitch. And, and Rao making some moves after the play as well. Looks like a card might be on the field, hurt down on the field here. Caleb Rao came into this game with 13 catches for 168 yards and three touchdowns. We do have a down Cardinal as we speak. Well, I'm with Kyle Decker. I'm Jeff Kim. It's our drive to Canton here on Chatterbox Live. Sahan Dillon is our producer here this morning. And, uh, you know, I got to tell you, a uh, little damage pay for all of us here because we were all here uh, early in the evening, you know, waiting for this uh, rain delay slash cancellation postponement into this morning's game. And uh, so I think, you know, we're not getting paid extra for this at this point. They, though, I will tell you this. Uh, the nice thing that we did see... Coming on in, Darren Walters, the SID, was really good to bring in some um, some breakfast for all of us here this morning. I actually just uh, grabbed the stats and talked to Darren real quick, and I said, it's a lively morning this morning. He goes, yes, it is. <laughs> yes, it is. He is the great sports information director for Lakota West High School, and uh, he uh, he confirmed uh, <laughs> what we're seeing up here in the booth. It's, it's a lively group down on the field, and uh, looks like it's going to be a first down here for the Firebirds moving forward. Twins to each side. Closest to us is Rao and Davis as Bolton will change the play. And now Brian White will line up to the right of the quarterback on first down. And the throw into space, it goes to Lloyd, incomplete, out of the 45-yard line. Threw it a little bit in front of him, and then we had a nice downfield block. Tegra Shabola was all over Ronald Williams Jr. Big Tegra with a huge pancake, put him on his back and uh, got off. I think the cards were trying to look for, I think it was a good block. Big fellow just moved him and uprooted him, put him on the ground and did his job. But uh, that was an RPO. What that stands for is a run pass option there. He was able to pull it, but th there was uh, some, some conflict right there with the right end and wasn't able to get the pass out to Lloyd. Twins to the near side, trips to the far side and an empty backfield for Bolden on second and 10 at the 48 yard line with 11.03 left to go till halftime. He calls for it, he looks right. Now he steps up in the pocket, he'll run for it. Off to the 40, looking for the sideline to the 35 and the first down. Chased out of bounds there by Isaiah Myers, but not before he moved the chains. A pickup of 13. Yeah, it was not a registered, I would say uh, QB uh, draw, but it almost looked that way. But it, they had uh, some nice vertical routes there. It cleared out the box. Uh, nice alleyway, nothing up top from the pass attack, and Bolden took what was there. So a drive that started at the five-yard line in the first quarter with 2.57 left to go as we've melted the clock down a minute here in this second period. Still no score, but Lakota West is driving. Brogdon's in the backfield with Bolden. 
And the give to Joshua, off left tackle for some tough yards inside the 30 to the 29 yard line. A pickup of five for Joshua Brogdon. And something we'll, we'll, we'll keep a pulse on, the player that was down for the cards, which is critical, is Freddie Johnson. It looked like he got off the field and he's gonna be okay, but we'll keep a pulse and let you know once he enters back in on defense, but they might be just getting him ready for the offense and vice versa, Cameron Good has not received a lot of carries tonight. He came out a little dinged up, so I don't know if that's affecting him. We'll keep a pulse as we go as, as well there. Trips to the far side. A single wide receiver to the near side. It's Caleb Rao. Second and five. Brogdon's in the backfield with Bolden. It's another give to Brogdon. Off left tackle for a yard as he's pushed back on that far side by the godfather, Dante Corleone. Yeah, he... Uh, the Godfather is hungry this morning. He's uh, <laughs> he's eating up front. Up front, he's making some big time plays. Uh, we were talking about gumbo. Does the Godfather eat gumbo? <laughs> um, but he, gumbo gumbo is not being served. Uh, we'll, we'll find that out. But Brogdon and Brian White and Aiden Miller are uh, getting some early carries on here. And an empty backfield for Bolden on third down, third and five at the 29 yard line. A dummy count. And then now, now he'll get the real call from the sideline. Two on the play clock. They're going to have to call for the timeout. So a timeout. We saw two on the play clock. And I think by the time we saw it, they were seeing the play clock there too as well. With 9.27 left to go here in this opening half. Still no score in a decidedly defensive battle here between Cole Rain and Lakota West. Yeah, what a great battle so far. As we thought, what's been we've seen from both teams, great defenses, give those defenses credits. But let's talk about third and five here on the 29-yard line with 9.27 left here in the second quarter. I would look for them to see potentially. I think it's a good timeout by Tom Bolden, first of all, even though it's a second timeout used. They got one left. But I think it's two-down territory, in my opinion. You do have Matthew Howard, but right now that's a 46-yard field goal if they get nothing to gain. I think I look at this with the, the potent rushing attack, maybe – continue to do maybe a, a RPO, run pass option as we saw. Yeah, it wasn't effective the last play, but I do think that's a great way to continue. I think uh, Mitch Bolden is is making an impact as, as we're seeing quickly in this game. And I would put the ball in his hands in an RPO situation. By the way, this team, the Firebirds are on third down at 41% on this year coming into this ball game. They got trips to the right and twins to the near side. We see Brian White in a slot to the left. Bolton's alone in the gun. On third down, he wants to pass. Deep drop with time, looking, throwing, the nine route. Too long for Brian White out at the five yard line. Yeah, the wheel route, the nine route. He came off, Rao did a hitch, or a, a hunt route, a curl route, and then uh, Brian White came underneath on the on the wheel route, just couldn't connect. Good coverage, good coverage there, really wasn't there. Mitch Bolden put him in a territory where it couldn't be either the wide receiver or nothing. It looks like they're gonna give Howard the opportunity for a 46 yard field goal, approximately. Again, out of the hold of Silas Walters. Ed Bolden is the long snapper with 9.20 left to go. The wind right now swirling here at Lakota West. It's actually at his back, so that will help here with the length of this field goal. It's off the left hash mark, and we've got a flag. And the way that Coleraine's clapping, I don't know. Was there movement on the line? Yeah. They're backing up. And now I think you may have to bring out the punt team. Yeah, it'll be interesting to see if they actually, will they go for it now too? Um, or as I saw yes, last night, he, he hit. I am not kidding you. I thought it was an NFL stadium. Matthew Howard kicked a 60-yard field goal. He was on the 50, and he drilled it. So they might he, – he has the leg to hit this. He's now – it goes to well, let's a see where 56 they're yarder. This is a – Well, let's see. Hold on. So we're, let's see where the ball is placed at. We got a little co confusion on where the ball should be. As they call for an official stoppage here. So if they place the ball at the 39, you're right. It would be a 56-yard attempt. I, I, I got to tell you, that's kind of a poke at this point. Something to take note. Dante Corleone literally just ran out to the outside cornerback and was telling him to watch out for a fake. He went to every single guy on the right-hand side of the line and says, guys, watch for the fake. You talk about a heady, headsy player as a defensive tackle. He's out there saying, hey, beware of the fake field goal here. 
A five-yard penalty is only five yards. There we go. Okay, now we've got <laughs> we've got a Thank little you. bit of confusion on this. So the ball is placed at the 34. This is a 51-yard attempt. Cole Rain looks like they're going to come heavy. Good snap. The place to kick is away. End over win. Pin Wheeling to the goal line. Good from 51. Mercy. Oh, man. Wow. Matthew Howard from 51. Oh, man. Put him on the Bengals right now. That is a big old have mercy on that one. His third field goal of the year. He's one of two in this ball game and he has broken open this game at three to nothing with 9.13 left to go here in this first half. Mercy. I think that would have been good from 65. <laughs> that was 51 and it went through the uprights about three fourths of the way up. I, I think, honestly, that could have been at. Now, he had a little bit of wind to his back, as we mentioned. It's blown from north to south. But he absolutely crushed that. That's like Tiger Woods hitting a 400-yard driver. That, that was a rocket shot. It got up early, and it stayed high, and it kept going. It was incredible. 13-play drive. Took five and a half minutes off the board. Capped off by the 51-yarder for Matthew Howard, his third field goal of the year. And with 9.13 left to go till halftime, it's 3 nothing. Boy, he has got to be amped up right now. Help the end zone, Matthew. Yeah, he might put this through the field goal from the, uh, from the 40. <laughs> Kicks it away, end over end, and this one will go into the end zone touchback, number one this morning. Yeah, and, and we had the opportunity to talk about Matthew Howard, too. Tom Bolden yesterday, and he confirmed with Jeff and I that he wasn't even playing football until about a year ago, right? And uh, he was not a football player, and uh, he came out. They saw him kick a little bit, and Tom said, well, this guy's got, got a leg. Let's see what we can do here. And, and next thing you know, I mean, uh, if, if someone's not offering him a scholarship after seeing that, I don't, I don't know what else. You know, the, and, and we talk about adversity, right? He missed that first one. He came back and just drilled a 51-yarder. It says a lot. No. Oh. Have Freddie Johnson at quarterback. And believe it or not, this is only the second drive of the game for Colerain at 9.13 left to go. A motion of man to the left, and now they give it the pitch back to the coming right, out to the 30, and out towards the 32 yard line. That is Shannon Murray for a nice pickup there. First down on first down. Yeah, that was a nice little sweep toss. So they orbit motion to uh, the short side of the field there, here to the right side, to our, our towards way to the booth. And great uh, stock block on the outside, the right tackle sealed, and big positive yardage right there so far. And we've seen some big positive plays that Lakota West defense traditionally hasn't let up throughout the season. First and 10 at the 32 on a 12-yard pickup by Shannon Murray. The wing tee look, and they motion a man to the right. And it comes back to the left. It's Murray again to midfield, out to the 40. Murray, Afari knocks him out of bounds inside the 30-yard line, a saving tackle. Great way, so they go, they go uh, a toss to the short side of the field and then they do a counter sweep out to the left-hand side. And once again, great blocking. A little bit undersized offensive line, as Coach Cutright told us this week, but those undersized guys are fighting up front Great yeah, fundamental blocking and lots of room to operate. Like Alex Safari had to shed the, the stock like block and then force him and, and really channel him out of bounds there all the way down to uh, inside the 30 here. Pick up a 45 on the play, 8.53 left to go till halftime, three nothing in favor of Lakota West. But on the drive, as they motion Murray again to the left and now another give off the left side, big yards out towards the 20, inside the 20 out to this 16 yard line. So move the chains. A first down gain on get first lower, down. Wes, get lower. 
We have uh, we have Darren uh, the SID confirmed that that 51 yard field goal real quick was the longest in school history, tied for longest in school history with it's Justin nice Martin from 2013. So interesting note there. First and 10 at the 17 yard line. The fullback is MJ Flowers, who's been a big factor in the offense this year. And it's Murray again off the right wing, coming left out towards the 11-yard line. Actually, they're going to spot him back a yard to the 12, so a pickup of five on the play. Come on, D-line, recover. So we've seen a lot of bend but don't break from this Lakota West defense. Um, this is really where they're going to have to rely on Andre Henderson and, and uh, in uh, Prof, excuse me, Andre Prophet, Brian Henderson, and company. They really got to step up up front. And let Quad Crazy Jones and, and Jason Kuwatch and Aiden Miller come downhill. Second and five at the 12 yard line. High snap. And they give it to Flowers. Off right tackle and is dropped for a loss. Out at the 15 yard line. Vargas, the first to get there. Yeah, the junior Cam Vargas. Enjoys the flex after big plays, and rightfully so. He makes a lot of them. Came up through once again. I think that defensive tackle, uh, Profit, took up two guys there, which enables really Cam Vargas and company to come up through clean through those alleyways. And you saw it right there off the, off the scraping off the right hand side for a big tackle. Cole Rain is 36.5% on third down this year. Third and seven at the 15 yard line. And the sprint to the left, Johnson out to the sideline, to the end to the goal line, touchdown! On the keeper, Freddie Johnson from 15, 6-3 goal rain. Fast, Freddie gets the corner and goes. They couldn't keep contained for the Firebirds and Freddie, fast Freddie finds number one, four, six, potentially go up 7-3 here late in the first half, or I guess with about seven minutes to go. Big time score for the Cards. And that was a boot right, and so you might have wondered where the real estate, or boot boot to the left, uh, excuse me. And I think the, the wide receiver ran off of Fari. There's no one else out there. So once he broke contain, they brought everyone across the field from the wide receiver so it cleared out the secondary and Freddie was able to make the corner and go. Out of the hold of Tyler Prather, here's Pacini and before he can get the kick away we got a flag on the play. And I think it was, I don't think they had Jeff anyone scraping from right to left. I honestly think it was a complete clear out um, even though he booted to the left I think all the wide receivers went right which was hey we're going to get Freddie hopefully on a one-on-one -on -one situation and we'll take that with his elusiveness. And once he made that corner and they couldn't keep contain, he had a, a clear shot at the end zone. So whatever the, the stoppage of play was, we've got nothing to show for it. And here's the point after attempt. Out of the hold of Prather and Pacini knocks it through. Seven to three on the Johnson 15 yard touchdown run off the left end. It capped off a six play drive that went 80 yards and took just 219 off the board. Yeah, we're starting to see uh, the effectiveness of that Colerain rushing attack. Big time plays there. And, and how does the, the West defense, as we know, hasn't really been challenged this year. We saw the closest game, which was at Fairfield earlier in the season, where they were down 7 nothing, headed into the fourth quarter, rattled 21 straight. That was really the only time we've seen their defense be in conflict, per se, and it'll be interesting to see how uh, how the home field and the higher seed West Firebirds deal with some adversity down 7-3 here. Well, and adversity is nothing new to them. I mean, you know, you and I go back to the Fairfield game where – the Indians had a 7-0 lead through three quarters plus in that contest. And, of course, if you remember the Mason game, we had a similar situation there until uh, they were able to run away with it in the second half. So 7-3 to three is your score here. I actually, I, I'm trying to recall, that was a game actually they pitched a shutout. So, no, Mason never did have the lead, but it was shutout football for a good portion of that one. So 7-3 to three is your ball game. Here's a low kick by Pacini. And it's picked up at the 25, 30, 35, 40. One man to beat to the 50. Trent Lloyd with a big return of 27. If it wasn't for number seven, Shannon Murray for the cards, Trent Lloyd is to the house. 
but he came in. <laughs> what a special player. He's only a sophomore. He comes up with that ball bouncing the way it did. He scoops it up on the run, able to make it. And as Coach Bolden told us in the pregame, when he cuts, he cuts full speed. That's the difference. The difference between being good versus great. Guys like Trent Lloyd, they cut on the go, and you saw it right there. Great run by uh, number 15, Trent Lloyd. They go twins to the left. It's Rao closest to us out on the sideline, and Davis in the slot inside of him. Bolden on first down with 6.47 to go here in this first half. He gets the ball. He looks left. He throws left, and it's complete out at the 45-yard line to Davis. His first catch of the afternoon, or the morning, beg your pardon, a pickup of four. Nice little hitch route, pitch and catch there, and sets up for second and medium. As we know, that's a, it's a great opportunity to be in. They will give him five on second down. The throw over for Davis again out at the 42-yard line. So what you would call an extended handoff here to bring up third and short. And they go hurry up. They bring Eric Sefuentes into the line as a tight end. Take out Jackson and they bring Lloyd into a slot to the left inside of Caleb Rao. Brogdon's in the backfield with the quarterback who's getting a last minute sign from the sideline. So Bolden with 10 on the play clock. Brogdon's to his left, tight line formation. And the gift sweeping right, Brogdon is dropped for a loss out of the 46 yard line. Chased down there initially by Xander Kendall and cleaned up by <laughs> Demeskin Casse. Yeah, great. They uh, read option, but they actually skipped uh, pulled both guards, right right guard Cole Barella and uh, also Ed Bolden. But they, those guys were running out there clean. They weren't able to pick up that penetration, uh, which resulted in a negative play there. Caleb Rao will come out to punt, averaging 34 yards a punt this year. He's got one touchback and three punts inside the 20. So he's at his own 41-yard line, high snap. He gets it away, a little wobbler out to the right side and it'll roll out of bounds outside the 20. Let's see where they mark it backwards. So an exchange of position of maybe about 20 on the play and with 4.54 left to go here till halftime, momentum has clearly shifted to the Cardinals. Yeah, you think after that 51 yard kick, Lakota West would seize that momentum uh, but with the Cardinals able to come back and have an efficient and effective drive on offense to go up seven and an, another great stop there and not a great pump by Rao and so Cardinals have the ball at the 30 yard line coming out. Net of 16 as it turns out first and 10 at the 30. See what Johnson does here as it's a dive play into the line and the running back takes it out to the 35 yard line MJ Flowers where Anish Vias was there to meet him. In a base triple offense, uh, triple option offense, you have dive, keep, or pitch. And uh, you saw there, they've done some things untraditionally with some of the counters we've seen so far, but that was a simple dive to MJ Flowers. As we know, he uh, has been quite the effective back, almost 900 yards and 14 touchdowns. But uh, that triple attack of the dive, the keep, or the pitch is super effective. Myers to the near side, he's guarded by Jair Brown. On second down, another dive play, and they push him back. Cam Vargas stopping MJ Flowers for no gain. Yeah, the apex, as I mentioned, how important Dante Corleone is in the 3-4, in the big 58 for the Cardinals, vice versa. So important, as I mentioned, the big fellas up front there and how big profit is to allow Vargas, as you continue to see him fill those gaps, allowing Cam Vargas to have room to operate and Aiden Miller to come downhill is so significant. They're gonna give him four progress just outside the 35, so third and short, a third and a long four. Myers is a single wide out to the near side, otherwise it's a tight formation, an extra tight end. They motion Murray to the left, and we got a stoppage. So it was going to be a pass play on the drop back. Yeah, it looked like a nine route to Myers. And it's a timeout charge to Cole Rain with 3.27 left to go here till halftime. 
Along with Kyle Decker, I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us. It's Breakfast at Lakota, the Region 4 semifinals here on Chatterbox Live. I, I have to say, going back to how these teams got here, right, it, it, one of the things that I think about is point differential. Coming on in, Lakota West is uh, taking taking down opponents by nearly 24 points a ball game. They came in with 200 points, giving up just 34 coming into this contest. So when you think about the 34 co uh, points given up, that's just under five points a ball game through seven contests. Meanwhile, Coleraine has scored 210 points a contest, giving up 91. They got a plus differential on points scored at 119. That's nearly 15 a ball game. So you understand why they're winning and they're here in this situation. Yeah, great defense and also effective run game, right? And that, that's a great formula. And then turnover differential on the season. Uh, Lakota West is plus six and Coleraine is plus five, right? And really, if they don't have a bad game against Princeton, uh, it should be a one loss, which would have been against West here. So two really good football teams battling out for the semifinals. Third and four, movement on the line. This time it's on the Lakota West side. It looked like big Brian Henderson came out of his stance. Oftentimes every week we say, what's the best third and four play? The hard, the hard count. <laughs> so every, every, every week we say it. Sometimes the best third and four play is a true hard count uh, where the defense just can't always stay disciplined. They're so eager to, to get off the ball and stop them on that third and short uh, that oftentimes the offense is able to convert with the penalty. So they move the chains and move out of a tight formation and they go three wide, four wide and a diamond formation to their left. And it's the quarterback keeper off to the right side. Johnson being chased down over there and a good job out there by Quasi Jones to contain him for a gain of just about five on the play. Incredible job by Quasi Jones. Really interesting look pre-read pre of a triple option. Then they go diamond left with a single on the on the, on the the close side of the field to us and then a, a QB draw with Freddie to try to get him in space. Quasi Jones had a one-on-one -on -one block, I believe, with their tight end. He was able to scrape off him and force him out, and Jair, Jair Hollywood Brown came up as well to minimize only about a five-yard gain. Second and four on the pickup. He spot the ball to 45, put it on the near hash mark. Again, they show the tight formation and they stay very tight. In fact, we got a full house in the backfield. And now another timeout. As the clock had melted all the way down to zero, it looked like, and I think Johnson got the TO right before that. So if you look back to game one of this matchup, of in this season, in this 2020 contest, back a couple months ago, total yards in the ball game. Lakota West had put up 151 in that contest, Coleraine 118. And that turned into a 10-0 shutout here by West on the road. Aiden Miller, who, you know, we've only seen from one offensive snap this season when we've seen them, got the only touchdown and then got a saving interception, really, to uh, seal the game. Well, that's not the case today. I mean, today it's clearly Coleraine that's really taken over from an offensive standpoint. This is their third drive. They've already, already got seven on the board, and right now they've got momentum here with 3.20 left to go till halftime. Yeah, in that game, they also two turnovers by Cole Rain. They really dictated that as well in that low-scoring game, but really evenly stats there, and we'll see here at halftime, but I would assume that this first half would be pretty close as well. Second and six at the 45-yard line. They motion. A big group out to the left side, and then they give it to the right side to Flowers, and Vargas chases him out inside the 50-yard line. They needed the 50 for the line to gain. He's a couple yards short. I love that. I love the, 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 the strategy and the game, gamification from cut right to Bolden. They take two guys, uh, half the, the wing back and the tight end, and flip them. Called a flip. They flip them from the right side to the left side, so it makes the defense adjust. And then they come back with a run on that short side of the field on off tackle. Very, very interesting here and in what they're trying to, to exploit strategically, offense and defense. Balls at the 48-yard line. Third and two. Again, another tight formation. Double wings to the left. Johnson into the secondary. He, right to the first down marker. And we've got a flag on the play as well. He was awfully close to where he needed to be. 
And we'll have to sort out the flag with 3.09 left to go. Looks like a chop block against Cole Rain there. They, they did it quick. So chop block is, is when an offensive player is blocking a defensive player and another offensive player comes in and, and, and comes low on the defensive player, which is defenseless, which can really create harm and, and injury to that defensive player. So that will be a 15 yarder against Cole Rain. And they were oh, asked. That's a tough one to deal with, right? Because you saw how, the, how far Johnson went towards the first down marker. And, and he was really close, close enough there where you really had to think about, you know, how you would approach fourth down. Instead, marking back 15, and it's a punting situation with 3.09 left to go till halftime. That was such a quick play. It does make you wonder, that back judge who threw that flag, was he looking for that? Um, you know, to, 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 to on a third and two where everyone was jammed in there. It's hard for me to believe that maybe it's purposely a chop block, but you know, I'm, I'm not really quite sure about that. So they reset the down to third. So third down and we'll call it 17 out of the 34 yard line. Trips to the near side. Johnson has it. Now we'll keep it off the right side into space out of the 40 yard line and it'll roll out of bounds at about the 44 yard line. Did a great job of getting on through. Will Barber chased him out, but it's a pickup of 10. Great job by the Firebird defense of getting a big stop. I think that gives them a, with 2.43 left to go. One timeout for the Firebirds. That gives them enough time, depending on what type of uh, punt return here, to really make a difference. And, and don't, don't forget, uh, <laughs> there's two guys back here, Adrian Davis and Jair Brown, that can also take it all the way back the other way here. So Brandon Sinclair will kick it away. Comes to the near side and it will roll out of bounds out at, we're gonna call it the 27 yard line. So a punt of 33, nothing on the return for Sinclair. And it's first and 10 coming up for Lakota West with 2.36 to go. Seven to three in favor of Cole Rain in a good old fashioned defensive struggle here this morning. And yes, we did say this morning, a little weird for us to say it's having, we're having to get used to it. I think I said afternoon, you said evening at some point today. <laughs> it's, it's a morning game here and you know, we're just, uh, we're just rolling with the punches. Yeah, we're just glad to be here watching football and, and hopefully you guys are enjoying it at home as well. Bolden throws in the space, it's to White. He's out towards the 30 yard line. Minimal yardage there, Michael Best Jr. knocked him out of bounds for minimal gain. Tom Bowen told us their best offense is up-tempo offense. So sometimes in these uh, with 230 left and with only one timeout, it forces them to be up-tempo, which sometimes their best offense. So let's see how effective this offense is here. They go trips to the far side. Bowen looking left, throwing left. It's to Rattle out at the 37-yard line. Close to where he needed to be for the first down. And he's knocked out of bounds there by Kelly Willis. It's been there all game, right? First half is they're giving them that yardage. You know, they're giving them that cushion and, and coming back. And they're saying, you know, we'll, we'll let you dink and dunk for five or six. And they did give him the first down. Bowden looking left, now steps in the pocket. Rolls to the right and he throws, he gave it up. It's still loose on the field, picked up by Colerain. So are they gonna call incomplete pass or a fumble? They're right now, it looks like it's a fumble. Yeah. Still sorting it out on the field with 2.07 left to go. They're gonna stay up front. They're gonna say it's an incomplete pass. I don't know if there was a receiver in that area. Do you call intentional grounding? Yeah, you gotta, there's gotta be a penalty out there. That's 100% that's intentional grounding if it's not a fumble. I do believe it was a forward pass. I do think it went forward, um, but I do think 100% should be intentional grounding. So a discussion in the middle of the field, and again, the referee this morning is Michael Curry. So we're seeing the initial signal looks like intentional grounding. Bolton's disgusted. 2.07 to play till halftime. A contentious game to be sure. I mean, we saw that from the very beginning as the two teams came out to the middle of the field to greet one another this morning, and we saw flags even before the opening kickoff. Yeah, 
they're going to lay out the penalty flag. And so you're hearing the local crowd calling for a receiver in the area. Uh, let's, let's be perfectly honest. There was nobody in the right area. Because he was trying to throw to the right as he was falling down. There was nobody in the space area right of the hash mark. So we're going to... Yeah, I think I think 100% is an intentional grounding, but it's, it's if you're Tom Bolden, the Firebirds, you're you're thankful that that was not a huge turnover play, and they'll live live to play another down here. It'll be second and 20. It looks like on the 26. And that is the case here. Triples to the far side, a single receiver to the near side. Bolden with time, steps up, throws deep middle, caught. Jordan Jackson out across the 40 to the 42 yard line. A pickup of 16, and they go quickly to the line as we drop the clock under two minutes. Third, and we'll call it five. Bolden again, real quickly, and now he gets the ball. Looking right, throwing right. And it's off the hands of Davis, a little too strong, and I think a case of the yips for the quarterback. Yeah, it went off his, his hands there. I still think it wasn't a great ball, but AD typically would probably come down with that. Um, previously great ball, as you mentioned, to Jordan Jackson on a dig route uh, to set up that third and five, gain 15, and then not able to convert there really hurts. So we had seen previously Caleb route a punt. Instead, here it's Gavin Bowie, 5'11", 195 pounds. He's at his own 28, he'll boot it away. It's a long driving kick that takes a bounce. Still rolling inside the 10, inside the five, down to the one. <laughs> 57 yards on the punt, nothing on the return. For the brand here in Lakota West Territory, Pat McAfee would be excited to watch this game. Seeing a 51 yarder and then a a bunch of great special teams plays right there with a great punt by the young man to pin him down. Sets up, unfortunately, if, if you're uh, Lakota West, you only have one timeout left here with 123. On, so uh, you probably might, I'm not a great mathematician here, GK, but might might be able to get a few seconds left in the clock. I'm not by sure. the way, that is a season long for any of the, Col beg your pardon, Lakota West punters, a 57 yarder to set. Up the offense at the one. Do you bring the house if you're west? Absolutely. Got to. They motion Murray into the backfield, and now they'll bring him up front to the right. And they'll just simply try to go rub, rugby scrum into the line and push the pile all the way outside the five-yard line to give him some room. Not surprised. So the quarterback keeper, beg your pardon. No, not surprised. Right behind the godfather. You <laughs> see you know, when you got to get out of there, he, he is a load. I'm very impressed. This is the first time we've seen uh, Dante Corleone in person and us seeing Cole Rain, but it was a – he's a fantastic player. <laughs> and his conditioning, think about that. He's going significant plays on both sides of the ball. Uh, it is a stoppage of play here uh, for – it looks like they're going to use their last timeout for Lakota West with 101 left here. But Dante Corleone, he is – going to be a force at the next level for Coach Fickle and uh, Marcus Freeman for the Bearcats. He is, you know, he is a great player. I mean, good nimble feet. Reminds me of a guy, obviously maybe a little bit more of a, of a force than Joe Reed for Mason, who we saw a lot, but he is a really, really effective and disruptive player. So neither team has any timeouts left to go in this half. One, oh, one left to go. Second, and we'll call it five at the six yard line. Just inside the right hash mark. Now here I would be, Jeff, a little bit more careful. They got out of the end zone and can't allow a big play here. MJ Flowers is a deep back. I mean, he's really deep, by the way. He's, he's, he's in the end zone right now. So Johnson, did he just take a knee there? Yeah, I think they know there's not enough clock here. Um, with the play clock, two plays left, that's they're going to be able to burn off the rest of the one minute left here. 
Well, that's a good way to mitigate damage, right? Because instead of a mishandle and a turnover and a possible score by the defense, you go into the halftime break with the lead. Seven to three right now for visiting Coleraine, the five seed leading the one seed here this morning. We'll wait one more snap and look to go to a halftime break. Fast moving game to be sure. He melt the clock under 30 and there we go. The last snap of this first half and it's a lead for Coleraine. The Cardinals leading the Firebirds by a score of 70 to three. We're due for a break. It's the region four semifinals. And it's been a good one here. And we'll bring you the second half coming up here on Chatterbox Live. get the ball to start half number two as we see out there Shannon Murray out to the wide side and trying to take a look uh, your eyes might be better than mine here but uh, trying to take a look at the number on the near side so we got Shannon Murray as you mentioned and it looks like maybe Ronald Williams jr. potentially if I my eyes I know I might be a little younger than you GK <laughs> with you being a recent birthday guy but uh, it's, it's uh, they're far away from here in the booth. Well, if that's 20, that's Levert Jarman. Okay. So, we, you know, it's funny. You would think that we'd be able to discern between an eight and a zero, and uh, that's not the case right this second. <laughs> Matthew Howard will kick things away to open up half number two. And knowing Howard, it might not even matter. <laughs> he probably put it through the back of the end zone as he typically does for the Firebirds. Light wind here in Westchester. End over end to the goal line and out of it his second touchback of the afternoon. It's still morning, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, they're still, uh, still before uh, noon on a Saturday here in beautiful Lakota territory. Definitely a much different morning than it was evening as mentioned early on in the broadcast we're, we're definitely bundled up up here but it's uh, football weather for sure well, I'll ask you a question about preparation after this play so it's our first play from scrimmage it's the wing T and they motion here's Johnson deep drop with time and now flush down the pocket runs to the right has the first down out to the 35 yard line so a pickup off the broken play as he's taken down by Jair Brown, who's a little slow and get up. How about that? Just a boot out to the left side of the field. Complete broken play. Cuts it all the way back against the grain. Uh, Quasi Jones was able to keep contained. Jair Brown was able to force him out, but complete broken play. That's just Freddie Fred being an athlete. Coach Cutright said that. They talked a lot about in the, the quarterback room of, hey, there's going to be two or three guys that are on you, meaning that Freddie – has to be able to, or MJ, have to be able to juke out those guys and make plays. Wing T look, they motion a man to the right side and it's a counter pitch to the left, it's to Murray, who got big yards in the first half, across the 40, out to the 42 yard line, a pickup of five. So let me get back to that question I was going to ask you. Because you're, you're so typically used to playing at night, how much does a five o'clock wake up call affect players even when they're in prime condition? Yeah, I think th there's a big thing about that. I was fortunately able to play at the college level. So we played a lot of games at night and then we had games at noon. And the noon games uh, were pretty early <laughs> and you were waking up at six or seven there for these guys. It it's a big difference. Uh, the adversity they faced last night to this morning is dictating the results here on the field. We got an illegal procedure call against the offense. Somebody moved on the line. There's just so much, Jeff. There's so much emotions that go into preparation, visualization, getting your body right, and you're so amped and you're on schedule to play at a 7 o'clock game to kind of back that down for a little bit and then ramp it right back up in early morning. And let's, let's not kid ourselves. These are young kids, right? The morning time might not be always the time they're alert. Second and nine. The deep back is Flowers. And he's wrapped up. 
the quarterback taken down at the 34 yard line. Vargas was in there and so was Quazy Jones. The ex Cole Rain, Quazy Jones, making big plays in the second half to start off. Loss of two on the play. If you're Cole Rain, knowing that you go with the wing tee and it's a primarily a run offense, do you go to the long ball here or do you stay on schedule and at least say, let's manage the game from a field position standpoint? I don't think taking a shot to Myers is a bad idea here. See what he can do. Myers is split out to the near side. They go twins to the near side and a single to the far side. Drop for the quarterback, now throws long, and it's to Foster, incomplete at the 35-yard line, guarded well there by Silas Walters, who did put both arms up to make sure that the back judge knew that he was not interfering with the receiver, and it's fourth down. Yeah, Freddie was scrambling back there, almost was past the line of scrimmage when he let that rip. He was trying to figure out if he runs or passes it, made the late decision to pass it, jump ball, which can be scary. There was, it was well out of play, but almost a pass interference. Silas Walters put his hands up because there was some contact, but I think overall, if you understood the play as a, as a referee to say, hey, there, there really wasn't enough contact uh, with the ball with even, even within range to call anything. We see Trent Lloyd instead of Jair Brown to return along with AD, Adrian Davis. They go after the punter and it's to the middle Picked up by Lloyd, up the middle, out to the 40, and he got beat down very quickly after a gain of two. Xander Kendall with a big hit there. Inside linebacker flying down the field, the six foot two, 225 senior linebacker with 39 tackles overall. Got his, if not his 40th or above, came flying down, but give Trent Lloyd credit for coming up and fielding that and trying to make a play. Tomeskin, Casse was also there, and it's first and 10 after a punt officially of 23. First drive out of halftime for the Firebirds. Brian White is the tailback. He's in the backfield with Mitch Bolden, who calls for it, and now will Pitch it out to White, in space, has some room, across the 45 and out towards midfield. So positive yards here for Brian White on first down. Here's the pitch play again to White, in space, across the 50, he's got the first down, out to the 48 yard line. Taken down by Ronald Williams Jr., but not before they move the chains. First and 10. And something also to note, um, Cameron Good is still on the sideline. He's not even near the offensive staff, so I wonder if he's banged up from an injury perspective or, like we said, if there's something else going on. But looks like he might not uh, see a carry again today. First and 10 in Coleraine territory. Out at the 48-yard line. Bolden with 13 on the play clock. Calls for the ball. And the gift to Brogdon off the tackle to the 40, down to the 36, to the 35, pushing the pile to the 33. I picked up a 15, and you don't think they were hot coming out of the locker room? Mercy, I pick up a 15. Yeah, the senior running back, 5'10", 215, he's a load. The senior has 33 carries for almost 200 yards and two TDs, and they're on the up-tempo offense here. First and 10, officially at the 32. The keeper by Bolden out to the 30 and a, uh, inside the 30 to the 29, tackled by Xander Kendall. The effectiveness of this offense, there's not a lot of two-way platoon players, if any, for Lakota West. We've really seen them start to lean on guys like Dante Corleone or any guys going both ways like Freddie Jackson. We'll see the the uh, sustainability of the two-way players for Coleraine in the second half. Rockton comes out, White comes back in. 17 on the play clock. 7-3 Coleraine, they position White to the left of the quarterback. Tight formation, twins to each side. They motion Lloyd, it's a fly sweep to Lloyd. To the 25, breaking free to the 20, to the 15, inside the 15, first and 10. A pickup of 16 on the play. Yeah, jet sweep to Trent Lloyd. And, uh, man, he just somehow, someway, he is not a big guy. You know, with Lloyd only being 5'11", 180 sophomore. But the way he is able to cut, once again, is, is significant. Tight formation, twins to each side. 
Brogdon's in the backfield, coming in on that last dead ball. Bolden switches the play at the line. They reposition Brogdon to the right of the quarterback. Five on the play clock. They motion Davis off to the right side. Has an angle to the 10, to the five, he's gone! 12 yard touchdown run on the fly sweep to AD. And West has retaken the lead, nine to seven. AD dancing in the end zone for the touchdown. Last week he was doing the shuffle. Number five, Adrian Davis, 4-6. Looks like the dance moves might have got him a penalty today, but nonetheless, jet sweep off to the right-hand side of the field. Once again, similar to Freddie Jackson's touchdown. Teams that aren't able to keep contain are able to get around and get a, a clear touchdown there in the right corner of the end zone here on the far side of the field. Second lead change of the ball game. Nine to seven, pending the extra point. Matthew Howard waiting out there. So a big time run for Davis, and it was a mirror play from the one that they ran with Trent Lloyd to the other side. Yeah, they're gonna give him unsportsmanlike conduct for and I guess that'll be on the kickoff because uh, the, the point after attempt will come from the same spot. So they wind up the clock, and it'll be Silas Walters to hold for Matthew Howard. The long snapper is Ed Bolden. And this is a side of the field that uh, Howard set the school record with a 51-yarder in the first half. Good snap. Place is down. The kick is away and through. 10 to seven in favor of number two, Lakota West, uh, undefeated at seven and zero. That drive soaked up six plays. It took uh, a minute and 40 seconds off the clock. It was the end around run for Davis from 12 yards out. The point after is good. The brand new score here in Westchester is 10 to seven. Yeah, back to back, think about Jet sweeps there, one to Lloyd and then the, the back the other way to the far side of the field with Adrian Davis. Two guys, once again, that had receiving touchdowns last week in the playoff game against East. Tonight, being super effective on the ground themselves in these jet sweep motions. Obviously, a great adjustment by Lakota West at halftime to, to be uh, cognizant of maybe some of the weak points of contain for uh, Coleraine defense. And it'll uh, be interesting now to see what uh, Coleraine comes back after a uh, big score there by the Firebirds. Well, they'll place the ball at the 25 for the kickoff on the unsportsmanlike conduct penalty. 10 to seven's your score. And the return men are up at their own 15 yard line. So there's an old adage in basketball as we await the kickoff, and I'll get to it after after Howard kicks it away. He approaches and kicks it end over end, a deep one to the five, to the end zone! Are you kidding? Touchback number three, mercy! That went 75 yards. <laughs> Let me just take that. <laughs> The place, I haven't, they, they haven't got more excited on that touchdown by, by Adrian Davis. They didn't stand up and cheer the way it did for Matthew Howard. He's got a standing ovation here at Firebird Stadium. He just kicked it 75 yards. His third touchback of the morning. So I'll tell you, I'll, I'll say this, right? So one of the old adages in basketball is about the first five minutes coming out of the locker room after intermission. And that's played somewhat here for Lakota West. They had a defensive stop, and then they had a good offensive attack going all the way to the end zone. And I believe that's been where the momentum has changed. And the running play goes to the left for a few yards, out to the 25-yard line. Ball apparently came out at the end, but it's going to stay in position of Coleraine. I think something I'm seeing, at least the initial adjustments, they're putting Jackson Kuwach to the far side of the field typically, or he's shadowing somebody. Looks like the tight end. So there's some personnel 
management adjustments here for Firebirds. Second and five, and it's taken away! Here comes West! It's a scoop and a score, and he's fired for six! The fumble occurred, we've got a flag on the play. If it stands, it's a 25-yard scoop and score for Vias. They're trying to figure it out here. We're trying to give you guys some clarity, but uh, the ball was popped out. Vias picked it up, turned and ran. He had a... They're trying to figure it out here. Looks like a block in the back against West. So it'll be a first down for West, but will, the, the score will be pulled off the board. So it's a clear turnover. In fact, you and I had seen Al Safari and Jair Brown point in the direction of the offense. First and 10 on the turnover, the fumble. Yeah, I think Aiden Miller got in there, Jeff and popped it out, and Vias was able to scoop it up. Been incredible. <laughs> it was almost a ballerina. He was turning around and, and uh, circling, and uh, looked like someone, obviously, we're not quite sure who blocked in the back, but uh, nonetheless, they're going to get the ball about the 30-yard line headed in for a chance to uh, continue to push up the lead. So the fumble and then the yard mark off is due to the block in the back, so they'll place it at the 29-yard line. There's an old saying that momentum is a fickle mistress. Twins to each side. Bolden, roll right, looking downfield, throwing, complete, out to Caleb Brow. Out at the 15 yard line, a pickup of 14 on the play. Sprint right by Money Mitch Bolden, rolling out. Caleb Rao just with a drag route across. Patient, opens up, finds the hole, and for a first down on the first play of the drive. Davis comes limping off the field. Jordan Jackson takes his place in the lineup. Twins to each side and they go tight. Now they bring Rao out to the near side and now they motion him back tight into the formation. They officially spot the ball at the 17. And it's uh, the end around. It goes to Lloyd. He cuts back up to the middle of the field for a couple of yards inside the 15 and out towards the 13 yard line. The effectiveness, as we mentioned, of the jet sweep, uh, motioning the uh, inside wide receiver across, whether it's AD or if it's Trent Lloyd, they try again there, but great contain by the Cardinal defense to force Lloyd in for a minimal gain, setting up a second and six here. Again, they go tight to the line, twins on each side, and I think they found something here in the second half. They motion round to the right side, pushing his way out towards the sideline, outside the 10 yard line and he is pushed out of bounds just before the 10 yard line. Yeah, he's close to a first down, not quite sure. He was on the far side of the field here waiting to see. It looks like it's gonna be third and very short for the Firebirds. So it's third down with 6-12 left to go here in this third quarter. 10 to seven in favor of Lakota West. They take out Brogdon and bring back Brian White into the lineup. Third and we're gonna call it three. They need the eight yard line for the line to gain. Trips to the short side, the far side. White's in the backfield with Bolden. And we got a stoppage in play. It looks like a timeout. It is a timeout to Lakota West with 6.12 left to go here in this third period. And this is a crucial third down partner because you, you feel like you need six here in this situation as opposed to the attempt for three. Yeah, if, if you remember first quarter, it almost <laughs> gives <laughs> give me some recollection here is that it was almost third and short, third and medium, and it ended up being a botched snap, uh, which then reverted into the, the missed field goal. So this is another opportunity, once again, in the red zone. Now in the second half, how do they convert this? It came out before uh, the timeout and a pistol, which we haven't seen the pistol too much, which is where Bolden's there, and I think Brogdon was right behind him. So a really interesting look there. Uh, I think they really good timeout by Coach Bolden to really understand what do we want to do because this is significant. The difference between three 
in six is, is incredible uh, in the second half with the type of defense they have. Well, I, let's talk about the lineup setup here. You know, obviously we're on uh, on audio here this morning, but what they've done is they've stacked the two receivers on each side of the line, and they've gone tight, and that somehow is made Coleraine rethink how they want to attack on defense, and it's given them some room. Now they go trips to the near side, the wide side. White's in the backfield with Bolden on third and three. Out of the timeout, and motion out on the far side. They're going to have to push back five. Oh, you hate to see that. The short side wide receiver out there. Looks like Jackson with a false start for the senior wide receiver. That's something third and three. Now third and eight is is a huge, huge uh, penalty there. So they'll reset and they stay. Trips to the left, the wide side, to the near side. It's Rao, Davis, and Lloyd, the three amigos out there. And this is where we saw them run verticals last time with Lloyd coming across the middle where Bolden hit him last week. On third down, Bolden calls for the ball. They motion Lloyd. They fake the give. Now they roll right. He's sacked. He's dropped. Out at the 24-yard line, Lavert Jarman got him for the loss. Their leading tackler on defense. Big players make big plays in big games. Jarman with a huge play, which is going to have to bring out Matthew Howard to see if he can hit another pretty long field goal again. So they spot the ball. Out at the 23-yard line on that loss of seven. This is a 40-yard attempt off the far hash mark. A little cross breeze to the right, good snap. The place to kick is away, and good! Howard hits from 40 to make it 13 to seven. Matthew Howard, number 41. He's hit now from 51 and 40. And if he doesn't slip probably on the first half field goal, he's probably three of three with uh, three field goals from 35 plus. And, uh, you know, we, we, we talked about a lot this through the, the season. When would Matthew Howard impact a game significantly? He, he always does. But what does a kicker do in late in a drive to Canton in the playoffs? We're seeing it right here. 51 and a 40-yard field goal. Most, country, most teams across the country don't have a field goal kicker like this. And, and you talk about what that would do. Right now, Cole Rain would be up 7-6 potentially without the leg of uh, Matthew Howard. So it's significant special teams penalties as we talk about every week. Special teams coming into play here. Also great punts. Both special teams have done pretty well with Colrain and Lakota West. Jarman and Murray are at their own five yard line awaiting the kick. If they win, I think uh, Matthew Howard should be on the uh, Tom Bolden show on Monday. Absolutely. Big end over end kick. Big air. And it goes five yards deep into the end zone. Touchback. You need to tell Ty Bradshaw and Tom Bolden to let the young Matthew Howard be the host this week. <laughs> at Buffalo Wings and Rings. Out at Beckett Ridge. Let me say hello to Cy Rose and his crew out there. First and 10 at the 20 yard line. 13 to 7. So momentum is flipped here in this third period. It's 10 unanswered here by the host team this morning. And it is still morning. I just looked at the clock right where, where what? At, uh, about 12 till the top of the hour. Again, back in the wing T. They motion a man back to the right, and now the give to Murray coming right on the counter play and maybe one yard on the game. And give Colerain credit real quick as we're transitioning here, but that, that was a scoop and score. Penalty comes back. They were able to stop them to a field goal, right? A touchdown really, really, I think, makes this game a different ball game, but they stop them to a field goal. They bend but don't break, and now they still have an opportunity. One score, they go ahead. So lots of opportunities here that the Colerain defense – is continuing to allow their offense, but I do think their offense is going to have to mix it up a little bit. Freddie's going to have to maybe pass it one or two times here in the second half. Johnson at quarterback, and they move 
Meontae Stanley as a tight end to the right. They motion another man to the right and another motion play. Another motion call, flags on the field. Yeah, we saw a lot of that by Coach Cutright in the first half. A lot of flips and motions and different things to try to leverage themselves with personnel. And you can see Kuwatch jumping around. He does follow Stanley from side to side and is matching up with him. But I think sometimes when you're motioning so much, at times that does create an opportunity for some false starts. Second and 13. Now spot the ball at the 17-yard line with 424 left to go. Here in this third, along with Cobb Decker, I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us here on this drive to Canton on Chatterbox Live. It's the Region 4 semifinal. Again, the wing tee and the pitch out on the left side and stopped. A big pushback out on that right side. Andre Profit, the first man there. Yeah, and, and safety, free safety, Will Barber, the 5'11", 180 senior, was in that as well. So. Seeing not only the defensive line, but safety's coming up in the box and making some tackles. And you can just feel the momentum. You can feel it up here in the box. You see the vibe of the players on the field, and you feel the fans even uh, impacting the game here a little bit. And the defense seems to have a little bit of swagger coming out of the second half. Third and 13, a big play for Colerain here on third down. As they pull the quarterback Johnson into a shotgun. He gets it, deep drop, looking left, now steps up, and is dropped inside the 10 yard line. Jackson Kuwatch, number 33, the big fellow, been waiting to say his name, comes in with a big sack. He shed off that tight end, as we mentioned, he's shadowing. He ripped underneath and came in clean and got Freddie before Freddie could make a move. It's a loss of seven on the play, and it's a punting situation for Cole Rain. And they're having to punt out of the end zone. Anytime you're punting in the end zone, where you're sitting in the end zone as a punter, that is not a good situation to be in, and a great opportunity for Lakota West to continue to put some points up here in the third quarter. And Lloyd and Davis are at the 35. The punt is away. Lloyd backs up on it at the 40, up the middle, out to the side. Now cuts back to the middle of the field, out to the 30. And he has nowhere more to go after that. Looks like a penalty on Lakota West. Number 13 was there. If William it's Barber. 13, it's Will Barber. Yeah, it looks like Barber got caught up there with a hold or a block in the back potentially. So it looks like that's going to void out Trent Lloyd. Once again, you, he, he does look like, I mentioned a lot of times, Julian Edelman, uh, Wes Welker. When those guys field punts and those that watch NFL or – you know, he, he just looks so comfortable in traffic and, and really makes a uh, secure catch and great runs. But uh, that Will Barber penalty is going to bring him back to the 50-yard line, it looks like. So a 15-yarder against starting safety of this Firebird ball club. But still a short field nonetheless here. After initial punt of 31, the return of 5, and then they... March the ball backwards out to the 50. 13 to seven, and again, the tight formation on both sides. And then now they bring Rao in motion. They fake the give, and now the quarterback keeping it off the left end on the counter out to the 46 yard line. Fake sweep, read option off the left hand side, and then Money Mitch keeps it, goes off the left tackle there, gains about three or four yards making it second and about six for the Firebirds. Behind the, the counter block from Cole Barella to bring up second down. Now they go a little bit more split. The ball. Twins again to each side, though, a little bit more out to the sidelines this time, especially on the near side. And it's the run play again for a few more yards and a nice step through by the quarterback out to the 41-yard line behind his cousin Ed Bolden for a pickup of five. We haven't seen that often, just a straight option. Uh, just attacked right downhill between him and uh, Brogdon, I believe, and he kept it, and uh, it was a good decision. Now third and one. Third and a long one. They need the 40-yard line for the long line again. Now here's the pitch out to the near side. It's White out to the 30. He's got the first down and more inside the 30 to the 28-yard line. Needed two, got 14. They liked what they saw, up-tempo. They're continuing to go up-tempo right in front of us. They ran the option, the same exact play, and you've seen that quite often. We saw it with the jet sweeps and different things. If they see something 
and they see in a base defense, and if Colerain or any uh, opponent's not adjusting, they're going to keep running it. Doubles left, doubles right. So we march to Clark down to a minute. Bolden gets it. Now, looking, he'll step through. He thought he wanted a pass, and he just decided to step forward when he didn't see anything that he liked. No gain. And he was dropped there by the godfather, Dante Corleone. So they run two straight options to the short side of the field. They ran a fake option there, and Lloyd was running a backside post. Just had penetration, wasn't able to set up, as you said, but <laughs> interesting luck. Look, option, option, fake option, step back, post over top on first down. They're trying to play aggressive there, which is not a bad time. Second down, Bolden gives it up. It's Lloyd, no gain. They were a little bit more wise to it this time. Kenny Willis came up from a safety spot to drop him for a one-yard loss. Yeah, him and Xander Kendall, the inside linebacker, flowing across. Big tackles there. Once again, bend to don't break defenses. And we are at the end of three periods here in Westchester. It's 13 to 7. This is a drive to Canton here on Chatterbox Live. Twelve more minutes here in this one here in Westchester, 13 to 7. The one seed leading the five seed, West leading Coleraine along with Kyle Decker. I'm Jeff Kim. Thanks for joining us here on Chatterbox Live. It's the drive to Canton. So they switch sides of the field, and I, I have to tell you, with a one-score differential partner, another touchdown, maybe not so much a field goal, but another touchdown here for West could really, really make the difference. Yeah, I actually like if Howard hits, if they are able to get Howard in here, though, making a nine-point game does make it a two-score game. So the difference in the three here is, is significant as well. Trips to the near side. Bolden, deep drop with time. He wants it all. Davis, incomplete out of the goal line. For the first time today, we saw the nine route here for the home team, and it's fourth down. Yeah, it just wasn't a whole lot there. As you mentioned, Davis on a fly route, double, almost triple coverage there. They were well defensive play there. Great job by Cole Rain, and uh, now Howard's going to have to kick. There's a brisk wind coming against him uh, on a soon-to-be 46-yard field goal attempt. He's going to have to really drive it through the wind uh, for this one. It is a swirling wind angling south. Walters gets the ball. Good snap. The kick is away. It angles to the left and is no good. So Coleraine is held, and we've got a down Cardinal out at midfield. Great defensive stop by... Cole Rain there, once again, third downs uh, seem to be the Achilles heel for Lakota West on offense, having a few of those negative plays. And how big is that, the field, <laughs> that fl that coin flip of what direction you're going and when. Uh, Howard took advantage of the wind in one way, and now it's, it's, it's brisk in his face. And you could see that ball almost like a baseball or a golf ball get caught in that wind and really shot it down. Well, the way they're attending to the player, it looks like a cramp of some sort. It's a little chilly to have a cramp today, right? Yeah, I, I would think so, but it uh, looks like number 29 there. It, it Kenny is. Willis, junior cornerback, 5'11", uh, 24 tackles, and he has an offer from Akron, the Zips, who seem to be recruiting this area pretty aggressively with Andre Profit already committed. Oh, yeah. Um, hopefully the young man is okay, and it looks like he is. He walked off on his own power, and I would assume he'd be in the game quite shortly. So they'll spot the ball at the 20 yard line. First and 10 out of the shotgun. It's Johnson matriculating up the middle. Nice sidestep out to the right. He gains five on the play as he got into the linebacking core. And a good job there out on that defensive left side. Kuwatch was there in coverage. When you think about all the field goal attempts today, anytime you kick four field goals, you're leaving a lot of points on the field. 
give credit to the Rain defense and Coach Cutright that they're keeping their offense in the game, but they're going to have to get some points here. On second and five, it's a run play to Flowers. Up the gut, he's got a first down out to the 32-yard line. As he worked over Brian Henderson on the way to moving the chains, they'll spot him at the 33, a pickup of eight. Something I've been impressed with is MJ Flowers' size. At six foot one, 185, he's only a junior. He's a big, long, lanky running back that runs with power and speed and agility. He's, his future's bright in a Cards uniform. They're gonna respot the ball at the 32, first and 10. It's another run play and they're wise to it. A loss of one as Kuwatch came in on the ball handler. Yeah. Henderson came underneath on a swim move that looked like got immediate penetration. Kuwatch crashing down from the outside linebacker position for uh, a no gain there. Now it's second and 10. We're under 10 and a half minutes left to go in this ball game. A six point contest. They are amped up here in Westchester. Second and 11. Murray is a wing to the left. Now he's, they slot him to the left. Now they motion him back to the right side. And they give the Flowers up the middle as he angles to the right, past the line of scrimmage, a gain of two and no further. They'll give him the 34 yard line, a pickup of three. Quasi Jones in there that time. So last play outside linebacker, Kuwatch on the right hand side now, Quasi Jones on the left hand side. Now it looks like they're bringing a nickel package uh, with Quasi coming out. And it looks like number 11. Joshua Fussell, five foot 11, 170 pounds, just a sophomore. We've seen him here in these playoffs in relief of Jair Brown. So third and eight and a big third down here in Westchester. They motion Shannon to the right. Now the quarterback rolling left, throwing left to Flowers out to the 40 yard line, a little short of where he needed to be. He needed a 42, they knocked him out at the 40. Nice little play there to get arrow route to Flowers, but just not enough. Afari was tracking him down, man to man spy and was able to track him and push him out slightly before on the 40 yard line it looks like they're going to punt but uh, be looking for a potential fake fake here as well. So we got a timeout with 9.18 left to go. Alright actually we don't have a timeout. I mean the way that Coleraine came out to the sideline you thought they called for the TO. Nine on the clock. They're going to have to hurry. They're going to have to call for the timeout. Three on the play clock. One on the play clock. Nothing on the play clock. At that point, I wouldn't even have burned a timeout if I was Coach Cutright. You know what I mean? Keeping that timeout versus the at the 40-yard line, you're better off unless you're going to go for it on fourth and two. Just take the fourth and seven, save that timeout for when you need it uh, with nine minutes to go. But, uh, you know, five yards could be crucial. But that's why, uh, as we talked about with Coach Cutright this week, and what a great guy he is, but uh, that's why they pay him to be on the sideline and me up here in the booth. By the way, speaking <laughs> of the two head coaches, Bolden and Cutright, right? Now, you asked a great question, and it's not one we typically think about asking football guys, but it had to do with who would beat who in an arm wrestling match. <laughs> of course, in my interview with Coach Cutright, I had to end it with an arm wrestling matchup, and he said he was being political at first, and then at the end he goes, you know what? Coach Bolden wears a visor, and I turned my hat around, so I'm a little bit tougher. I would take myself, so. Brown is the return man. Ball's at the 40, and the punter is out of his own 25. That's Brandon Sinclair. Brown's at his own 34. Good snap. Nobody's coming, and it's angled to the right. It's a little wounded duck that takes a forward roll past the 30-yard line. Let's see where they officially spot it. Just inside the 30-yard line at the 29. 31 yards on the punt, nothing on the return, and it'll be first and 10 for West. Not a great punt there. You're hoping, using that timeout to garner some additional yardage by saving five yards, but once again, not, not a great punt there uh, for the young man, but... Uh, We'll see what the, the Firebird offense can come out with. You, I think they're gonna, you're going to continue to see jet sweeps, read option with Mitch, continuing be, behind Ed and Tegra on that left side of the line. 
First and 10 at the 29. They line the ball up on the far hash mark. With 9.09 left to go, Bolden calls for it out of the shotgun. It's a sweep to the right. Miller into the secondary to the 40. Down the side, midfield. 41 man to beat 30. 20 to the 15 to the 10. A saving tackle there by Isaiah Myers. First and 10 coming up. Mercy, what a run. They're going to spot the ball at the seven yard line. That's a 64 yard run for Aiden Miller. Here's Miller again up the middle for shorter yardage out to the five. Big carry. Big running back, Aiden Miller, 23. Hasn't seen a bunch of carries, but when, they, when he has carried the ball, it's been significant. Second down, second and goal. They bring in Brogdon, they bring in Jackson. They take out Sefuentes and they also take out Champ Gillespie. So they decide to go wide receivers and they go three to the left and Rouse a single to the near side with nine on the play clock. Shotgun look for Bolden. They motion Brogdon to the right. Now he takes it himself. He cuts back at the five and he is snuffed down. Good job on defense. Levert Jarman on the stop for no gain. Yeah, it looked like Barella there or, or Lahan McCormis just couldn't come up with the block. They come up with that block. Mitch might be walking in. Great play by Coleraine defense to make that stop. Brogdon out and White comes in. So Tom Bolden freely substituting here in the late minutes with 7.40 left to go in this game. A big play here. The biggest third down of the game with 7.34 to go. It's a pistol look for Bolden. Now they motion White to the right. And now Bolden to the right. He is stopped from behind and pulled back down. And again, it is Jarman on the stop. A loss on the play. Jarman, Jarman, Jarman. Saying that name a lot, he's making huge plays. Go for the field goal! Came in free there off the, the outside. Once again, how critical are the outside linebackers on both sides for each team? Jarman is making significant plays, as we just mentioned in the previous drive. So the older Bolden is exhorting the younger Bolden out on the sideline. They bring in Howard on fourth down. And with the wind in his face, this is no gimme, even though it's short. For 20, from 26, and he powers it through. His third field goal of the morning, now the afternoon, and it's a two-score game, 16 to seven in favor of Lakota West. That makes him, what, three of five on the, on the morning slash afternoon? Yes. I can't believe he's gotten five attempts, but that's how good the Coleraine defense has stood up, especially when uh, West has gotten into the red zone. Yeah, I wonder when the last time we have to get this stat, the last time there's been five field goals kicked by Lakota West five, in general. Uh, well, five attempts anyway. Yeah, five attempts. Not, not made, but uh, yeah, five attempts uh, with Howard. And we know earlier he tied the school record at 51 yards. Um, be interesting to see what, what is the largest attempts in the game. 6.37 left to go and a two score lead for Lakota West. The winner of this one will take on the winner of St. X and Elder going on right now as we speak. And something to take note of after that uh, third quarter, some of the stat lines, the overall offensive yards uh, for Lakota West, 201 to 167. So you can see the swing obviously with the scoreboard as well. Still uh, have four more minutes of possession at 19 minutes versus 15. So. Uh, a lot of the possess now 100 yards of rushing, so they're able to uh, come and, and make those as well. By the way, we got a score to report, and that is St. X leading Elder 20, beg your pardon, 49 to 28. The ball taken at the 12, return man 15 20, out to the 27 yard line, Shannon Murray on a return of 15. 49 to 28 in the fourth quarter, so it looks like St. Xavier 
will be in the final, barring some sort of big push from Elder in the fourth. Man, those guys put up, the Bombers put up some kind of points. That offense is, is potent, to say the least. Every week you look at them, I believe they lost to Brownsburg early on. That's their only loss. That was right, week D1, one. But how they rebounded, beating LaSalle that week after, on fourth, I mean, they're, they have been playing extremely well. We said the line of scrimmage was a 27. It's the 22. Beg your pardon. We had a little side adjustment here with 6.32 to go to the conclusion of this one. First and 10 at the 22. Johnson, the quarterback, the pitch and a flag on the play. It goes to Murray off the right side into the secondary across the 30, and we'll see what the flag is. The legal shift, it looks like, ouch. The, the sweep uh, pitch to the outside, toss, able on the right side, able to be a 12 yard gain is going to be nullified with a, a minus five for an illegal shift against Colrain. So. Hold back the big gainer for Murray, who's had some big yards. In fact, he set up that first touchdown with some big runs in the second quarter. Yeah, he had a 41-yard run there. Shana Murray did 65 yards on the day for 10, 10, 10 yards an average. You can see there he was meeting above his average with the 12-yard run. He is uh, having a great ball game here for the Colerain Cardinals. Clock stopped at 6.25 to go here in this one. They wind it up. And away we go here on first and 15. Out at the 16-yard line, the ball's in the middle of the field between the two hash marks. They go twins to the near side. Myers is a single flanker out to the right. They motion Shannon back into the line, out to the right, and a deep drop for the quarterback with time. Now rolls to the left. He runs out of time. he keep it out across the 20 to the 21, chased out by Anish Fias. Yeah, Kuwatch came in, once again, unblocked. Uh, great move by Freddy to, to elude him. Uh, so he broke contain, but the flow of the, the speed of the defensive lineman able to track Freddy down uh, for uh, from second and 15 for a four yard gain to two, second and 11 here. And the clock has become an enemy now for Colerain. Down by two scores in this contest, 16 to seven. Yeah, that Howard kick, as mentioned, just getting that continued attack on three, making that a nine-point game is from six to nine is, is significant. Trips right. Johnson looks right, throws right, complete, and a minimal gain there. Silas Walters on the stop uh, after the catch of Murray after a gain of couple. Yeah, that's only... Freddie's third attempt today, so it makes him two of three. Uh, a little hitch route, but now you can see bringing in uh, their their original starting quarterback, Tyler Prather, the six foot four, two hundred ten senior, who's had four hundred thirty two yards on the season. So he does he can throw the ball, and it looks like they're going to do that. Just imagine right here, potentially, even though it's third and four. Third and four at the twenty six yard line. They need the thirty for the line to gain. Prather on the deep drop. Looking right into space, it goes to Flowers. And he plays it back to the middle. He's got the first down across the 30. So a zigzag run back down on the seam, outside the seam, now back into the middle. Or, well, they call him short. Wow, it looked like he had it. But they're calling. It looked like they had it. They needed the 31, right, or the 32. And MJ Flowers, what a run. He was almost bottled up there, and he got he evaded Vargas and some of the other guys. Looks like they're going to bring it out for measurement, potentially. I thought he got it from up here. Uh, exactly. It's same here. So with 4.59 to go here in this one, a critical look to see if it's a first down or a fourth down. Watch the ball, defense. Don't give up Short. Tackle. You got to go. Yeah, you got to go for it here. Um, sorry to <laughs> cut you off there, GK. But, yeah, I mean, it's it's a no-brainer to me for Coach Cutright. You know, you only have probably two possessions left as is, so they're going to have to score on this one and get the ball back and score again. Well, it's not a big distance between where the ball is and the first down marker. You just go with the dive play. Yeah, I think, I think you go with the dive play to MJ Flowers. There's only, like you said, about looks like a subway foot long out there. <laughs> <laughs> I was trying to figure out <laughs> what, what I could but I guess You can tell it's lunchtime. Yeah, it's, it is getting hungry here. The big fella, a.k.a. me, is uh, ready for a sub myself. But uh, look 
Dakota West uh, fans, you can hear them really getting into this one. Well, if, and if you're West, you still have to defend for the big play, right? On fourth and one, knowing that you're on offense, Coleraine still needs two scores. And if you can pop one here, that'll really put some pressure out on the Firebirds. So fourth and one, a massively huge play in this ballgame with 5.05 to play. They come to the line. And it's Johnson under center. He rolls left. He has the first down, it looks like. He got a pushback. Vargas and Kuwach converged on the runner. And they're going to move the chains. Big time first down there to keep the life alive for there. Just he kept it, as you mentioned, and, and uh, he was able to seek it out with the QB keep. Now they're, it looks like they're going to try to spread it out with that diamond, diamond right single with Myers on the on the far side, and it's Johnson quarterback in the shotgun. He throws into space, a little screen, and he stopped. Jair Brown knocked down the man for a loss, a loss of five on the play. Hooray for Hollywood. Jair Brown with a huge play came up like a heat-seeking missile and was able to meet the, the uh, wide receiver right at the point of catching the ball and uh, almost popped it out there. It looked like a, a potential another one for scoop and score, but another big-time player for Jair Brown. So a loss on the play, second down, as we melt the clock under four minutes to go in this one. They go trips right and a single to the near side. Prather back at quarterback, he's low. Home run to the right from Myers, in and out of his hands at the 40 yard line. And a good job of one-on-one -on -one defense for Brown again. Two plays in a row for Hollywood. Great ball by Prather, give the give the quarterback credit there. The senior put it in a great spot for Myers, a 50-50 ball. Brown was just able to get his head around and his hand turned in a point of vision for Myers, but now makes it third and 14 for Cole Rain against a very, very, very tough Lakota West defense. Clock stop at 342. Ball's at the 30, out on the far hash mark. This time they go trips to the near side, a single to the far side. Flowers in the backfield with Braith of the quarterback. He gets the ball, deep drop. He steps up, he throws. It's incomplete, out of the hands of Myers. Knocked away from, from Brown again. And again, hooray for Hollywood. Hooray for Hollywood, three in a row. He says, hey, keep bringing it back my way. Keep testing me. They're trying to force it into Myers and uh, Hollywood got a hand there, almost deflected it up about 10 feet in the air, making it a fourth and 14 for ball game right here. So they converted their last fourth down on fourth and short. Here, this one, uh, as you just mentioned, a lot bigger. Fourth and 14. And here we go with 3.37 to go. They go twins to each side. Prather's in the gun. Deep drop, they come after him and it's caught out at the 42 yard and the 43 by Myers. Doesn't look like he got it. Looks like he'll be short. He's short. It's a turnover on Dallas. Lakota West has held. And guess who? Hooray for Hollywood again. Four times in a row for number four, Jair Brown. Big time play, missed last week. He comes in, gets tested four times in a row, Jeff. Four times, and hooray for Hollywood. He's up to the stops. challenge. Yes. He's up to the challenge. Partner, good one here. You're gonna walk out the door where we're gonna call the rest of the, the these minutes here by ourselves, and I'll see you next week, partner. Absolutely, thank you, sir. 3.30 left to go. They'll take over at the 43 yard line. And it's a run play to the right. And it's brought on his feet to the 40, out to the sideline to the 36 yard line. A pickup of seven on the play, and he's taken down there by Devontae Kiner. Go, 
321 on the clock. Second down and three after the pickup of seven. Brogdon stays in the backfield with Mitch Bolden. Twins to the far side. They go tight with a tight end to the right. And the gift sweeping right. It's Brogdon into the secondary. 30, 20, 10. He's gone. There's your exclamation point. 34 yards. 22-7 West. Two plays from Joshua Brogdon, 43 yards on the drive. It only takes up 18 seconds on the drive and we wait the point after. And Lakota West has broken this one open. So turnovers have been an issue in the story of this ball game and whether it's a turnover on downs or a turnover the traditional way, West has been able to capitalize. Silas Walters waiting to hold for Matthew Howard, who had been a big story in this ball game. Three field goals, and they have made a significant difference. But this one, the exclamation point, to give him an insurmountable lead as he powers this one through. 23 to 7 with 312 left to go. The winner of this one, and it's going to be Lakota West, will meet the winner of St. X and Elder going on right now. And the last we checked, it was St. X big. So one versus three, we expect a week, actually uh, in six days. You're almost thinking this is a Friday night game as we're calling this one. We're uh, Saturday afternoon, and then it's Friday night next week, 7 o'clock. And we have yet to hear whether that will be at a neutral site or at the higher seed at this point. In any case, we're going to have that game right here on Chatterbox Sports. And for those of you who want to pay attention to Ohio State, because that's going on right now, it's a tie ball game between the Buckeyes and the Cornhuskers, believe it or not. Seven apiece in the first. So as we mentioned, Brogdon capped off the two-play drive all by himself, really. He had a, a run on first down, and then he had a run on second down, and that's a 34-yarder, and that is the exclamation point to give them a 16-point lead. Technically still a two-score lead, but you, now you need touchdowns and two-point conversions for Cole Rain. Howard to kick it away. This one is short. Angling to the right side and out of bounds, out towards the 35-yard line. That is the Trace Fowler special. So for those of you who don't know, my old tag team partner likes to kick out of bounds because that helps negate the big return. And especially when you have a lead like this with this little amount of time left to go, there's no reason to worry about the big return. You might as well just give them the, the 40 and, and let them have at it. So this second half has been owned by the home team. They have gone off on, uh, since trailing at halftime, 7-3, to three, they've gone on a 20 to nothing run here in the last quarter and change. So 3-12 left to play here in this ball game. Will they re-kick? They'll re-kick this one. So Coleraine has decided instead of taking the ball to 40, they, they just, they'll take the yardage. So the yards will come back and the ball will be placed at the 20. And it'll be a little further kick, I would imagine, and more of a traditional kick here for Howard. It's not very often that you see a team disdain the 40, but that's, that's how Coleraine's playing. It's a low squibber out to the 40, and it's taken by Murray out, beg your pardon, Jarman. And he returns it for five right up the middle. Where Davis was there on the stop along with Joshua Fussell. So for all that was worth, they gained five yards basically on the net on the penalty. 
So it's first and 10 for Coleraine with 3.08 to go. Have some fun, do it again. For those of you who've been paying attention to us throughout this game, Kyle Decker has left the building. Joshua Brogdon has scored an insurance touchdown, and it's first and 10 at the 45 yard line. Prather, deep drop, throws over the middle, complete out of the 40 yard line. Amari Shannon, and they quote quickly to the line. Pick up a 15 on the play. Prather has Flowers in the backfield with him as we melt the clock under three. High snap, he gets it. He pulls it down, he throws to the right on an angle route to the sideline, incomplete. Out for Freddie Johnson, who had been the quarterback for much of this game. So I'd sure like to know what Tom Bolden said at halftime because this has been a different Lakota West Firebirds team before intermission and after intermission. 23 to seven is your score. Second down and 10. Prather's in the gun, Flowers in the backfield, twins to each side as wide receivers. Deep drop with time, now throws over to the left, incomplete. Looking for Amari Shannon against a double team out there. Afari was out there closest to him. Be surprised to see a running play at this point, especially with Prather who's been throwing. He'd been hobbled up with a leg injury since the Hamilton game a few weeks ago. That was the regular season finale in the GMC this year. Third and 10 at the 29. Shannon is flanked out to the right, now slotted to the right, trips to the right, and a single to the near side. Prather, deep drop, looking left, throwing left, and it's incomplete out of the 20 yard line, defended by Afari and looking for Aaron Foster. So it'll bring up Fourth and 10 with 2.42 to go. Fourth down, guys. Let's never let him get the ball back. Take it away right now. Ball's still kind of loose on the field. Again, breezy conditions here all through the morning and into this early afternoon. Game time temperature is 44 degrees. It really hasn't increased by much here in this game. Fourth down, deep drop, Prather, throwing right, and it is nearly picked off. And it's a turnover on downs. Looking for Myers on that far side and deflected out there by Fussell. So a lot of pass plays there. All we saw were passes on that last sequence. And West will come out. With 2.37 left to go, technically it's a little too early to just take a knee especially since there's timeout still up on the board, but you would imagine that they'll just run and do very little else than that. So the first and 10 at the 39 yard line. The give, Brogdon sweeping right now, cuts back and has nowhere to go. First met out there by Xander Kendall. And he got some help by the big godfather, Dante Corleone. So second and 10 coming up. 2.10 left to go to the conclusion of this one. And as you would all expect, Lakota West taking their time. They're in the huddle. They're still in the huddle with 12 on the play clock, and now they come out of it. Under two to play here in this contest. The wind's picked up a little bit here in Westchester. They come to the line, and the quarterback keeping off left tackle. On his feet to the 45, pushing his way to the 50. A nice second effort to pick up 11 for the quarterback, Mitch Bolden. Let it be said that Lakota West has played championship football here in half number two of this contest. One thirty to go. Lakota West has a date with the Region 4 Championship game next Friday. 
They go doubles to the far side, tight formation. And the give, sweeping right again to the running back, out towards the 46-yard line. Ball came out at the end. I think the running back was down on the play, tackled there by Levert Jarman. So Aiden Miller, we see him in the backfield offensively, and he had such a big run. The setup, the go-ahead, well, I don't want to say the go-ahead, but the score that allowed Lakota West to go up by two scores, and then subsequently on the following drive, it was Joshua Brogdon with the insurance touchdown. Lakota West is showing the victory formation. 42 frozen on the clock. Now they wind up the clock. Bolton's under center. He'll take the knee. And he'll come to the sideline. And that's it. That's all she wrote. The Firebirds advance. They improved to a record of 8-0. They win it this afternoon, 23-7 over Coleraine, who finish up their year at 6-3. How impressive was the defense, especially in the second half? Very impressive. In fact, they pitched a second half shutout, and the offense came alive. A big hand, it went to... Oh, you, what you have to consider our star of the game here this morning slash afternoon, Matthew Howard. Three field goals, including a school record 51 in this ball game. The play of the game, I don't know. I believe at this one you have to give it to AD. Adrian Davis had the 12-yarder around the right end, and that gave Lakota West the go-ahead uh, to give them the lead, and that was a lead that they would not relinquish here in this contest. So Lakota West will move on next week, next Friday, and they'll take on St. X, who won today over Elder in a blowout, 56 to 28. We're going to see some kind of matchup a week from yesterday, next Friday at 7 o'clock. Site to be determined whether it'll be here or at a neutral site. Again, the final here in this one, 23 to 7. And again, Lakota West improves to 8-0. They move on to the Region 4 final. Well, we're going to close out this game here and say thank you so much to our producer here this morning slash this afternoon, Sahan Dillon. For Kyle Decker, I'm Jeff Kim. We bid you so long here from Westchester Township. Again, the Firebirds are winner 23-7. Good day.